Hello and good morning, everybody. Welcome to Circle Time. Miss Emily here on a sunshiny day. I'm gonna hang out and wait a couple seconds for everybody to get here as usual. But I hope everyone's having a good day. I'm busy playing with something down here. You guys will see what that is in a minute. But good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a good day. I hope you had a good weekend. Sunday was Father's Day. I hope you guys got to do something special for that, um, for somebody special in your life, whether it's a dad or a grandpa or an uncle or just somebody special. So we're gonna hang out for just a couple seconds, but as always, I have some fun stuff planned today. We're gonna read some books and I have some songs and rhymes to sing. And then I have a super easy craft today, but I think it's going to be really fun because it, it's so easy. You can make a bunch of them and then you can race them. How cool is that? So I will show you all about that when we get there, but good morning. Welcome. Welcome. We're just hanging for a second until everybody gets here. I hope everybody had a good weekend. I hope everybody's staying nice and cool. All of a sudden, it got really hot out. I guess that means that summertime is really, really here. Is anybody doing anything fun for the summer? I was just talking about going to the pool. My mom has a pool right in her own backyard. So we like to go over there in the summertime and swim in her pool. So that's lots of fun. She's getting it ready. It just has to warm up a little bit now. The pool is really, really cold. It'd be like almost like swimming in ice cubes and that's not fun. So we're gonna wait and let it warm up and then we'll go have fun in my mom's pool. Do you guys uh, go to the pool in the summertime or maybe even go to the beach? Oh, I love the beach. You can make sand castles and play in the waves. Oh, it's so fun. We're just going to hang another minute or two. I see a couple people joining in. Good morning. We're going to get started in just a second. Good morning, everybody. So like I said, we've got some stories today. We've got some, some songs and some finger rhymes. And I've got a super craft, I think, today. It's super easy. And like I said, it's so easy. You can make a bunch of them and then race them. So why don't we go ahead and get started um i think we're ready and just remember guys if you're watching this live um i can see the comments so feel free to leave a comment below so i can see who's here i can say hello you guys can talk to me a little bit um i'm missing you guys so much in the library still um so it's really nice when you guys talk to me in the comments so why don't we go ahead and get started so i have a book today called pirates love underpants what you think pirate well of course pirates wear underpants right but i like the cover of this book because look it's got a crab with underpants on what i don't think crabs really wear underpants do you i don't know so this is pirates love underpants by claire friedman and illustrated by ben court these pirates so love underpants they're on a special quest to find the fabled pants of gold for the captain's treasure chest. And oh my goodness, can you guys see how many pairs of underpants are hanging on that ship? That's a lot of underpants. And what's all this about pants of gold? What? Anchors away, the captain cries. Hoist up black bloomer sail. Unfurl the secret treasure map. Pants pirates never fail. Black Boomer bobs upon the waves. The captain shouts, hooray, sharks in fancy underpants. We found Big Knickers Bay. What? Sharks in underpants, how silly. The pirates grab their shiny swords and row their boats to shore. Yikes me hearties, what is this? Someone's been here before. There's footprints already. Who do you think's been there? The footprints lead through shifting dunes across Three Pants Bridge. Snap, snap, snarl the hungry crocs beneath the Long John Bridge. 
So there they go. They're crossing the bridge. And way down there, are there crocodiles? Oh no. The pirates wade through gurgling swamps, through caves as black as night. They trek through prickly undergrowth and gulp. Oh, what a sight. We're here too late, the pirates gasp. Another pirate crew. They found the golden underpants. What are we going to do? So look at all those pirates and golden underpants. What? Do they look very comfortable? I don't know about that. I don't know if I want to wear golden underpants. The captain has a cunning plan. It's clever. It's fantastic. Grab their fancy underpants and cut through the elastic. What? As the rival pirates sleep, they snip around on tiptoe. But help the pirates cat. Oops. Excuse me. Let's try that one again. As the rival pirates sleep, they snip around on tiptoe. But help the captain's parrot squawks and wakes them up. Oh no! Oh no, they're waking up. Grab those pants, the captain roars. They're after us. Ooh, arr! But with their pants around their feet, they don't get very far. Oh my goodness, look. They're all falling down, tripping over their underpants. Yo ho, ho ho, the pirates dance. Fine treasure fills our hold. But what's the booty we love best? The glittering pants of gold. Oh, look at all of that treasure plus golden underpants. So when you put your pants on, check the elastic is in place. Or like those silly pirates found, you'll have a bright red face. The end. What a silly book. I don't know what I would do if I found golden underpants. But, so let's do a little rhyme. And I have some little friends here with me. Just getting them all set up. So I have... Check these guys out. Little pirate parrots. So we're gonna do a little rhyme about some pirates, okay? So, we'll do it once, and then we'll do it again once you guys know it, okay? So this is five pirates heading out to shore. One jumped overboard, and then there were four. Four pirates heading out to sea. One stole all the captain's gold. Now there are three. Three pirates with not a lot to do. One was made to walk the plank. And then there was two. Two pirates having lots of fun. One drank all the first mate's juice. And then there was one. One pirate sitting in the sun. He decides to abandon ship. And now there are none. Oh my goodness, you guys want to do that one again real quick? So let me put all my pirates back on my fingers. Four, five, five pirates. There we go. Okay. So five pirates heading out to shore. One jumped overboard, and now there are four. Four pirates heading out to sea. One stole all the captain's gold, and now there are three. Three pirates with not a lot to do. One was made to walk the plank, and now there are two. Two pirates having lots of fun. One drank all the first mate's juice. Now there is one. One pirate sitting in the sun. He decides to abandon ship. And now there are none. Oh, that's a fun one. I really like my little pirate parrots. I might have to keep them. We'll see if my cats leave them alone. You guys know, remember last week my cats were trying to steal the chickens? We'll see if they try to steal the parrots too. Okie dokie. So why don't we do another book? This book is called The Little Green Pea. Do you guys like peas? Miss Emily really likes peas. I keep trying to grow peas out in my garden, but this year I didn't get very many peas. So next year we're gonna have to try something different to see if I can grow more peas. So. The Little Green Pea by Allison Barber and illustrated by Paige Kaiser. Oh, hang on one second. My cat was trying to eat the ribbon off of that and that's not really good for them. So here we go. 
little green pea. <laughs> and a field among fields off Interstate 3, and a patch past the peppers in row 53, grew one little green pea. But this is no ordinary pea. This little green pea dreams night and day of becoming a tree. Hee-haw, laughed all of the peas in row 53, and for that matter, too, laughed row 52. Use your pea brain, they cried. You're too wee to become a tree. But this little green pea said, no, I'm going to grow. And so he soaked up the sun and drank up the rain, and he grew what seemed like an inch or two. Oh my goodness, look, he's growing. He's not the littlest pea anymore. Then one day, hooray, a guy in galoshes came by and he mucked through the mud and he plucked and he chucked the little, not so wee, green pea along with row 53. And for that matter too, he shucked row 52 into a rusty blue bucket. Look, he's picking all of the peas. You see, whispered the little, not so wee green pea. This is it. I'm on my way to becoming a tree. Whee! Hee hee! Uh oh, said the little green pea in a very, in a voice very wee. Is this where I'm supposed to grow? Um, excuse me. Dear me, exclaimed the pea. Do they plan to eat me? They've got a recipe and some seasonings and they're in a pot. She worked, so he worked up his might to put up a fight, but with all of the drama to avoid such trauma, he fell to the floor and rolled out of sight. Oh no. Oh, now we have a really sad pea. How could this be, thought the little green pea. I wanted so much to become a tree. I dreamed night and day. I soaked up the sun and drank up the rain, but is this where I will always remain? And the little green pea went all wrinkly. See him all wrinkly? And then I ate him up. <gasps> Who's that? Oh, hi, I'm a squirmy worm. And I've been telling the story all along. And I especially love wrinkly peas. So I came along and ate the little green pea up off the floor, then wiggled right out the door into the yard. It took a while. He had to go past the bike. He had to dodge the bird. But I finally made it back to my mud pile. Do not be sad for the little green pea. And certainly don't get mad at me. You see, a pea is a seed. And wherever they spat, they mix and they mingle with this and with that. We worms do the mixing. The seeds do the mingling. And all of us wiggle. And all the while giggle. You see, can you guys see a whole bunch of worms wiggling around in there? There's a whole bunch of them. We especially like poo. We really do. Because out of it all, something grew, grew, grew. Hee <laughs> hee. What do you think that is? <gasps> Where did that tree come from? Does that bow on top look familiar? The worm took the little wrinkly pea and planted it and it became a tree. That's so cool. So the little pea got his wish in the end. That's really nice. So let's do a quick little rhyme. Um, this is only, this is a really, really short one. So we'll do it at least twice. So we have five tiny peas in a prop. I am so tongue tied today, guys. I am sorry. So, five tiny peas in a pea pod pressed. One grew, two grew, then did all the rest. They grew and they grew and they did not stop until one day the pod went pop. You wanna do that one again? Five tiny peas in a pea pod pressed. One grew, two grew, then did all the rest. They grew and they grew and they did not stop until one day the pod went pop. That's a fun one. Alrighty, so you guys ready for the craft today? I think it's going to be pretty cool. Like I said, you guys are going to be able to race these. So let me move my pirate parrots out of the way. 
and then I'm going to switch my camera around so you guys can see the table. There we go. All right. So this is going to be our craft today. Oh, I have him backwards. There's his face. See his face? So we're going to make fun little inchworms today. And these are super easy, but they have something special about them. So if I put him here and I take just any straw and you see how his back kind of humps up? If I aim my straw right towards his back, I'm going to put them this way and now I'm going to put the straw in my mouth and when I blow gently can you guys see that I'm making him inch across the table that's so fun so I'm going to show you how to make your own little inch worm okay so all you need is a pair of scissors and some paper you guys can use white paper. You guys can see I did this guy with blue paper. Let's make a pink worm this time. So all I'm going to do is on the short end, I'm just going to cut a strip. And it can be as big or as small as you want. I'm going to make it about an inch maybe. And I'm just going to cut straight up. Always have your grown-ups help you with the scissors. Okay, so now I have my strip. So now I'm going to take it and I'm going to fold it in half and get a good crease on it. And then I'm going to unfold it because then I'm going to take one side and fold it into the middle and crease it. And then I'm going to fold it into the middle again and crease it. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. I'm going to take the other side and fold it into the middle and crease and fold into the middle and crease so now I have this fun little shape and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in the middle again on that original fold that I did so now I have instead of one big long strip I have one tiny little square so now and you'll probably want your grown-ups help for this because you're cutting through a bunch of layers of paper so this might be a little tricky and you can draw the shape if you want um, you see how my inchworm is kind of round all you have to do is just kind of cut the corners off of your square. So I'll show you. I'm going to go on this side and I'm going to cut that corner off. And I'm going to cut that corner off and see how I made it kind of round. And then you're just going to do the same thing on the other side. We're just going to go around and around. So now we have our circle. So let me move all my little pieces out of the way. So now all we have to do is unfold our inchworm. And there we go, now we have an inchworm. Whoa, he fell over. So you guys can decide which end is his front end and which end is his back end. Um, I have a marker. I'm just gonna draw another face. As you can see, just drawing a face. He's a happy worm. And if you want, you guys could even decorate your worm, maybe put some stickers or color it in or draw some patterns. Um, you could give him, give him freckles on some of his segments. There we go, I gave this guy some freckles. What do you think? Does it look good? All right, so now we're gonna make sure he works. So then you're just gonna take your straw and remember you're gonna aim at his back where it's all humped up. So you see how it's all, and he's kind of springy. So if we aim there and blow, he's running away. Oh no. See, and you can, if you just blow right at the, the very back here, he goes a little bit faster, but I like to blow at the top because then he actually inches. So then what you guys can do is if you make a couple, you can get somebody else with you. Maybe your friends or some, your favorite grown-ups. Um, and you guys can race your inchworms and see who you could put like a, a finish line up here and you could see who would get to the finish line first. Let's see if I can do two worms at the same time. I'm gonna have to put them close together. Let's see if I can do two together. 
Oh no. <laughs> it's really hard to do with just one person. There's your guys' inchworms. You can do them in any colors you want. Like I said, decorate them. I think these are really fun. And if you don't have straws and you just want to give them a poke to make them go, that makes them go too. So there's your inchworms, guys. I hope you make some. If you make some inchworms and you race them, feel free to comment later and let me know. I'd love to see how your inchworms come out. There we go. Oops, I think I'm crooked, but oh well. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I am, but there we go. That'll work. So that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for coming and joining in with me today. I hope you liked our books. Um, keep on the watch out for golden underpants because, you know, if you find golden underpants, there's probably some pirates around. Um, and have fun with your inchworms, and I'll see you guys again next week. Bye-bye.